Let's go ahead and briefly dive into BuildShip, a brand new visual backend builder that combines the best of both the low-code and the no-code world to make building your backends as easy as a few clicks. What you see here is the BuildShip app running in my browser. I've got my BuildShip demo project ready, and I'm going to go ahead and add my first workflow. Now, each of these workflows is going to represent one action that my BuildShip app can take. Cool, so let's go ahead and click on Create Workflow and select my first trigger. Now, BuildShip comes with a bunch of templates built in to get us quickly started. Say if we wanted to use Google Vision or create a summary report from my Stripe vendor account or even quickly build an API that lets me generate a PDF from some HTML. But for now, I'm gonna add my own custom trigger. We have a bunch of options for different triggers that we can use. For example, we've got a Stripe bot that we can use, a Telegram bot, we can generate our own cron jobs, a Twilio bot, or even WebSockets. But we're just going to go ahead and use the first REST API call. This is going to add a node to our workflow, which we can see here at the top. So this is our REST API call workflow. Right now it's titled Untitled Workflow, so let's go ahead and rename that here in the settings be called hello world much better now when I'm working with lots of workflows I can find it quickly cool so we can type in a path as well as select a method but for now we're gonna keep this nice and simple when I go to the root path I should get a hello world response in the body so what happens next in our API is going to be dictated by the next node in our workflow right now we've just got a trigger but we need to now add a node to see what happens when we trigger that trigger. So this can be either one of several integrations, a loop, a branch. We can even generate one with AI. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll have a return node that does two things. First of all, let's us set a status code for an HTTP request. We usually want this to be a positive one, so we're going to go with OK. And then our value that's going to be returned in the body is going to be hello world a nice little exclamation mark. And believe it or not, friends, we're done. Let's go ahead and deploy our workflow. What we're going to do is click here on the top right on deploy. And while that does that, it's going to set up a URL for us that we can now test. And because this is a GET request, we can even test it in our browser. I'm going to go ahead and copy that URL, bring back my location bar, and go directly to that URL. And there we go. It's responded with a successful hello world. Let's go back to build ship real quick. I'll show you some other cool things. You might have seen here at the bottom that we've got some logs. And yeah, we can debug our workflow. You can see here we just made a request that returned successfully. Did a get request with the path. We can also have these come in live as we're testing, which is really handy. Finally, we can also take a look at the history of our deployments because, yeah, who knows, maybe we need to roll back after we deploy an upgrade to our backend. We can take a look at which one is currently deployed and also roll back to a previous one. Well, folks, that is a very quick overview of BuildShip, and you can already start seeing how quickly we can get up and running without needing to worry about anything beyond adding a few nodes and a few clicks. But really, this is just scratching the surface. There's so much you can do with BuildShip. Keep an eye out for future content where we'll show you more complex solutions and bite-sized videos just like this one. So that's all for now. See you next time.